three-phase totally enclosed fan-cooled, TEFC, induction motor, with, and, at right, without end cover to show cooling fan. And TEFC motor interior losses are dissipated indirectly through enclosure fins mostly by forced air convection. An induction or a synchronous motor is an electric motor in which the electric current in the rotor, needed to produce torque is induced by electromagnetic induction from the magnetic field of the stator winding. An induction motor therefore does not require mechanical commutation, separate excitation or self-excitation for all, or part of the energy transferred from stator to rotor, as in universal, DC and synchronous motors. An induction motor's rotor can be either wound type or skittle cage type. Point three phase skittle cage induction motors are widely used in industrial drives because they are rugged, reliable, and economical. Single phase induction motors are used extensively for smaller loads, such as household appliances like fans. Although traditionally used in fixed speed service, induction motors are increasingly being used with variable frequency drives, VFDs, and variable speed service. The FDs offer especially important energy savings opportunities for existing and prospective induction motors in variable torque centrifugal fan, pump, and compressor load applications. Skirrel cage induction motors are very widely used in both fixed speed and VFD applications. History Early Skirrel Cage Rotor In 1824, the French physicist François Cirago formulated the existence of rotating magnetic fields termed Irago's rotations, which, by manually turning switches on and off, Walter Bailey demonstrated in 1879 as in effect the first primitive induction motor. Practical alternating current induction motors seem to have been independently invented by Galilea Ferreris and Nikola Tesla, a working motor model having been demonstrated by the former in 1885, and by the latter in 1887. Tesla applied for U.S. patents in October and November 1887, and was granted some of these patents in May 1888. In April of 1888, the Royal Academy of Science of Turin published Ferreris's research on his act polyvase motor detailing the foundations of motor operation. In May 1888 Tesla presented the technical paper A New System for Alternating Current Motors and Transformers to the American Institute of Electrical Engineers, AIEE, describing three four-stator pole motor types, one with a four-pole rotor forming a non-self-starting reluctance motor, another with a wound rotor forming a self-starting induction motor, and the third a true synchronous motor with separately excited DC supply to rotor winding. George Westinghouse who was developing an alternating current power system at that time, licensed Tesla's patents in 1888, and purchased a U.S. patent option on Ferrer's induction motor concept. Tesla was also employed for one year as a consultant. Westinghouse employee C.F. Scott was assigned to assist Tesla and later took over development of the induction motor at Westinghouse. Steadfast in his promotion of three-phase development, Mikhail Delivo Dobrivolskis invented the cage rotor induction motor in 1889 and the three-limb transformer in 1890. However, he claimed that Tesla's motor was not practical, because of two-phase pulsations, which prompted him to persist in his three-phase work. Although Westinghouse achieved its first practical induction motor in 1892, and developed a line of polyvase 60 Hz induction motors in 1893, these early Westinghouse motors were two-phase motors with wound rotors, until B.G. Lamb developed a rotating bar winding rotor. The General Electric Company, JE, began developing three-phase induction motors in 1891. By 1896, General Electric and Westinghouse signed a cross-licensing agreement for the bar-winding rotor design, later called the Skittle Cage Rotor. Jess Charles Proteus Steinmetz was the first to make use of the letter J the square root of minus 1, to designate the 90-degree rotation operator in electric or mathematical expressions and thereby be able to describe the induction motor in terms now commonly known as the Steinmetz equivalent circuit. Induction motor improvements flowing from these inventions and innovations was such that a 100 horsepower induction motor currently has the same mounting dimensions as a 7.5 horsepower motor in 1897. Principle of operation In both induction and synchronous motors, the act power supplied to the motor stator creates a magnetic field that rotates in time with the act oscillations. Whereas a synchronous motor's rotor turns at the same rate as the state of field, an induction motor's rotor rotates at a slower speed than the state of field. 
the induction motor stator's magnetic field is therefore changing or rotating relative to the rotor. This induces an opposing current in the induction motor's rotor, in effect the motor's secondary winding, when the latter is short-circuited or closed through an external impedance. The rotating magnetic flux induces currents in the windings of the rotor, in a manner similar to currents, induced in a transformer's secondary winding or windings. The currents in the rotor windings, in turn create magnetic fields in the rotor, that react against the state of field. Due to Lenz's law, the direction of the magnetic field created will be such as to oppose the change in current through the rotor windings. The cause of induced current in the rotor windings is the rotating state of magnetic field, so to oppose the change in rotor winding currents the rotor will start to rotate in the direction of the rotating state of magnetic field. The rotor accelerates until the magnitude of induced rotor current and torque balances the applied load. Since rotation at synchronous speed would result in no induced rotor current, an induction motor always operates slower than synchronous speed. The difference, or slip, between actual and synchronous speed varies from about 0.5 to 5% for standard design B-torque curve induction motors. The induction machine's essential character is that it is created solely by induction instead of being separately excited as in synchronous or DC machines, or being self-magnetized as in permanent magnet motors. For rotor currents to be induced, the speed of the physical rotor must be lower than that of the stator's rotating magnetic field, otherwise the magnetic field would not be moving relative to the rotor conductors, and no currents would be induced. As the speed of the rotor drops below synchronous speed, the rotation rate of the magnetic field in the rotor increases, inducing more current in the windings, and creating more torque. The ratio between the rotation rate of the magnetic field induced in the rotor and the rotation rate of the stator's rotating field is called slip. Under load, the speed drops and the slip increases enough to create sufficient torque to turn the load. For this reason, induction motors are sometimes referred to as asynchronous motors. An induction motor can be used as an induction generator, or it can be unrolled to form the linear induction motor which can directly generate linear motion. Synchronous speed. RPM. Where is the motor supplies frequency in hertz, and is the number of magnetic poles. That is, for a six-pole three-phase motor with three-pole pairs set 120 degrees apart, equals 6 and equals 1000 RPM, and 1200 RPM respectively for 50 Hz and 60 Hz supply systems. Slip. Typical torque curve is a function of slip, represented as G here. Slip, is defined as the difference between synchronous speed and operating speed, at the same frequency, expressed in RPM, or in percent or ratio of synchronous speed. Thus, where is stator electrical speed, is rotor mechanical speed. Slip, which varies from zero at synchronous speed, and one when the rotor is at rest, determines the motor's torque. Since the short-circuited rotor windings have small resistance, a small slip induces a large current in the rotor, and produces large torque. At full rated load, slip varies from more than 5% for small or special purpose motors to less than 1% for large motors. These speed variations can cause load sharing problems when differently sized motors are mechanically connected. Various methods are available to reduce slip, the FD is often offering the best solution. Torque Standard torque. Speed torque curves for four induction motor types, A, single phase, B, polyphase cage, C, polyphase cage deep bar, D, polyphase double cage. Typical speed torque curve for NEMA designed B motor. The typical speed torque relationship of a standard NEMA designed B polyphase induction motor is as shown in the curve at right. Suitable for most low-performance loads such as centrifugal pumps and fans, designed B motors are constrained by the following typical torque ranges. A. Breakdown torque, 175 to 300% of rated torque. Locked rotor torque, 75 to 275% of rated torque. Pull-up torque, 65 to 190% of rated torque. Over a motor's normal load range, the torque slope is approximately linear or proportional to slip, because the value of rotor resistance divided by slip, dominates torque in linear manner. As load increases above rated load, stator, and rotor leakage reactance factors gradually become more significant in relation to such that torque gradually curves towards breakdown torque. As torque increases beyond breakdown torque motor stalls. 
Although polyvase motors are inherently self-starting, their starting and pull-up torque design limits must be high enough to overcome actual load conditions. In two pole single phase motors, the torque goes to zero at 100% slip, zero speed, so these require alterations to the stator such as shaded poles to provide starting torque. Starting There are five basic types of competing small induction motor, single phase capacitor start, capacitor run, split phase and shaded pole types, and small polyvase induction motors. A single phase induction motor requires separate starting circuitry to provide a rotating field to the motor. The normal running windings within such a single phase motor can cause the rotor to turn in either direction, so the starting circuit determines the operating direction. In certain smaller single phase motors, starting is done by means of a shaded pole with a copper wire, turn around part of the pole. The current induced in this turn lags behind the supply current, creating a delayed magnetic field around the shaded part of the pole face. This imparts sufficient rotational field energy to start the motor. These motors are typically used in applications such as desk fans and record players, as the required starting torque is low, and the low efficiency is tolerable relative to the reduced cost of the motor and starting method compared to other AC motor designs. Larger single-phase motors have a second stator winding, fed with out-of-phase current. Such currents may be created by feeding the winding through a capacitor or having it receive different values of inductance and resistance from the main winding. In some designs, the second winding is disconnected once the motor is up to speed, usually either by a centrifugal switch acting on weights on the motor shaft or a thermistor which heats up and increases its resistance, reducing the current through the second winding to an insignificant level. Other designs keep the second winding on when running, improving torque. Self-starting polyvase induction motors produce torque even at standstill. Available cage induction motor starting methods include direct online starting, reduced voltage reactor or auto transformer starting, star delta starting, or, increasingly, new solid state soft assemblies, and, of course, BFDs. Polyvase motors have rotor bars shaped to give different speed torque characteristics. The current distribution within the rotor bars varies depending on the frequency of the induced current. At standstill, the rotor current is the same frequency as the stator current, and tends to travel at the outermost parts of the cage rotor bars, by skin effect. The different bath shapes can give usefully different speed torque characteristics as well as some control over the inrush current at start-up. In wound rotor motors, rotor circuit connection through slip rings to external resistances allows change of speed torque characteristics for acceleration control, and speed control purposes. Speed control. Typical speed torque curves for different motor input frequencies as for example, used with variable frequency drives. Before the development of semiconductor power electronics, it was difficult to vary the frequency, and cage induction motors were mainly used in fixed speed applications. Applications such as electric overhead cranes used DC drives or wound rotor motors, rim, with slip rings for rotor circuit connection to variable external resistance allowing considerable range of speed control. However, resistor losses associated with low speed operation of rims is a major cost disadvantage, especially for constant loads. Large slip ring motor drives, termed slip energy recovery systems, some still in use, recover energy from the rotor circuit, rectify it, and return it to the power system using a VFD. In many industrial variable speed applications, DC and rim drives are being displaced by VFD fed cage induction motors. The most common efficient way to control the synchronous motor speed of many loads is with VFDs. Barriers to adoption of VFDs due to cost and reliability considerations have been reduced considerably over the past three decades such that it is estimated that drive technology is adopted in as many as 30-40% of all newly installed motors. Construction Typical winding pattern for a three-phase U, V, W, two-pole motor. Note the interleaving of the pole windings and the resulting quadrupole field. The stator of an induction motor consists of poles carrying supply current to induce a magnetic field that penetrates the rotor. To optimize the distribution of the magnetic field, the windings are distributed in slots around the stator, with the magnetic field having the same number of north and south poles. Induction motors are most commonly run on single-phase or three-phase power, but two-phase motors exist. In theory, induction motors can have any number of phases. 
Many single-phase motors having two windings can be viewed as two-phase motors, since a capacitor is used to generate a second power phase 90 degrees from the single-phase supply, and feeds it to the second motor winding. Single-phase motors require some mechanism to produce a rotating field on startup. Cage induction motor rotors conduct a buzz are typically skewed to reduce noise. Rotation reversal. The method of changing the direction of rotation of an induction motor depends on whether it is a three-phase or single-phase machine. In the case of three-phase, reversal is carried out by swapping connection of any two-phase conductors. In the case of a single-phase motor it is usually achieved by changing the connection of a starting capacitor from one section of a motor winding to the other. In this latter case both motor windings are usually similar, for instance in washing machines. Power factor. The power factor of induction motors varies with load, typically from around 0.85 or 0.90 at full load to as low as 0.35 at no load, due to stator and rotor leakage and magnetizing reactances. Power factor can be improved by connecting capacitors either on an individual motor basis or, by preference, on a common bus covering several motors. For economic and other considerations power systems are rarely power factor corrected to unity power factor. Power capacitors application with harmonic currents requires power system analysis to avoid harmonic resonance between capacitors and transformer and circuit reactances. Common bus power factor correction is recommended to minimize resonant risk and to simplify power system analysis. Efficiency by power system analysis. Efficiency by power system analysis.